morning and welcome to our webinar. We're going to get into some heavy stuff tonight about emotional eating and responses and the root ROOT cause of some of these things. So hang on. It's going to get heavy. And Deb, are you with us? I am. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And you all know Deb Whalen, the educator and the person who is so good with all of us emotionally disturbed adults. <laughs> <laughs> Unconditional love can change your life. And we keep leading you in that direction. So you will love yourself unconditionally and appreciate yourself more. This involves judging less and appreciating more. Mm -hmm. So true. Wow. No, sugar is eight times as addictive as cocaine. And what's interesting as well, cocaine and heroin activate only one spot for pleasure in the brain. Sugar lights up the brain like a pinball machine. Mm-hmm. That's why you get such a ride. That's why you get such a rise when you consume sugar or ice cream or soda or anything that has sugar in it. You get that, oh, I feel better feeling when mm -hmm. it's fake. So <laughs> we're going to talk to you about sugar and why sometimes with emotions we run to sugar. Yeah. Grab, write down bergamot, fennel, copaiba, and FCO because people have written to Deb and I. Don't they write, Deb, and they say, well, can I still use, can yes. I still use substitutes? Can I still use honey? Can I still use this? And what do we tell them? No. No, we really would prefer that you don't use those things. They, they really actually increase the desire for more sugar. Yes, they so. do. Yep. And what you want to do uh, is eliminate all sugar and artificial sweeteners. Go cold turkey. You must stop for your brain to reset. Eliminate refined sugars, sodas, fruit juices, artificial sweeteners from your diet. These are all drugs that will fuel cravings. And actually, if you think about it, it reinforces the viruses of the brain. Mm-hmm. Because when we're lighting up our brain with sugar, it's not healthy for us. So then when the sugar crash starts to happen, what kind of thoughts do we get? They're not happy ones. There are a lot of cravings. We could invoke some anger in there too. And um, it's just, it's like we have to go and reach and find something just to shove it in our mouth right away, you know, to meet that need. So we prefer not to do that. Right. Cold turkey's best. It's only three weeks, guys. We're getting ready for you to give your body a vacation for three weeks. And think of yeah, it if you were a pioneer and you'd be on the road with your Conestoga wagon, and this would be the lean time. This would be the period of time where you ran out of your winter rations, and so you're drinking lots of water. You're collected in barrels. Honey, you can steal from the early bees things like that, you're really kind of on a super fast while you're mm -hmm. moving, planting and doing all kinds of good things. <laughs> How sweet. It's true. If we could see the, see the world through the eyes of a child, boy, what joy, right? What magic. And we, we know little children like that. We have a couple little of our friends that are just like that. Yes, and this is part of getting off sugar and managing your emotions. You need to remember what it's like to have the imagination of a child mm -hmm. and to be free to look at things new. Mm -hmm. And the Jasmine Touch will do that for you. And where do you apply it? Right on your throat because you want to manage your mm -hmm. mind to not interfere with the wisdom from your heart. First of all, here we go. This is my big preaching. You've done nothing wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You have done no, nothing. No, we like to, right. We like to blame ourselves as if we did, but we but we haven't. Right. You know, 
everything that we've done, our products of our life experiences really impact us as we grow up and impact our our coping, right? It really okay. does have an impact on the way we right. deal with things. Right. right. We are all products of our life experiences brought forward. Our experiences help us find our hidden talents and gifts, especially mm -hmm. when we're stretched, especially when things happen where we have to draw on resources we didn't even know we had. Mm -hmm. Programming and habits can be changed through awareness, choice, examination, and new action. So when we become aware that there are triggers that can help us react, maybe not in the best interest of ourselves, when we recognize those triggers, that's called awareness. And then you have a choice. You can examine, do I want to react and take a hammer over the top of this person's head? Or do I want to just take a deep breath and let them have their silliness? Because in recognizing we have a choice, we can take new action. Mm -hmm. and Please recognize you are unable to change one aspect of yourself without it affecting every other aspect of who you are and how you look at life. So if you were previously a scarcity thinking person and you were always looking at the cost of everything and that was your focus, like how much is that going to cost and how will I ever get that money back? That's part of scarcity thinking. When that was programmed into you, you didn't understand there might be other ways to look at things. And when you move from scarcity thinking to accepting the abundance that is already part of you and part of the world around you, everything is going to look different, taste different, and feel different. And it will be up to you to decide which of those things you're going to label as good or you don't have to visit bad things anymore. Things mm -hmm. like betrayal, abandonment, disappointments, how we react to new experiences and how we process our values all are based on our previous experiences. We want to take our reaction and translate it into initiation. You want to initiate action. You want to initiate peace and calm because you're loving yourself. Okay. A lot of people talk about abuse and they talk about physical abuse. They talk about, I was locked in a closet. I had somebody take a hammer to my toes. People talk about physical abuse, but quite honestly, Many bad wiring situations inside our brain happen through emotional abuse. Mm. Emotional abuse is just as bad as physical abuse. In fact, it's often worse. You can heal broken bones, but you can't necessarily heal a broken mind. Meaning me as a therapist, I cannot heal your mind. Only you can do this for yourself. Only you can recognize what needs to be different. That's why we want to coach you to move from reacting to initiating. And here's part of our program for getting off of sugar. Mm -hmm. Right. There's um, a bunch of steps that we can do to eat less sugar. OK, the first thing and, you know, this is I always agree with this. Don't eat your don't drink your calories. You don't want to drink things that have a lot of sugar in them. Yeah, no flavored coffees from Starbucks. They all have sugar. They all use syrup. They do. And, you know, they don't necessarily tell you that, which is kind of sad, you know, right. but um, it tastes good. And it's loaded with <laughs> <laughs> that is true and you know you don't want to eat it for breakfast you don't want to have uh like cereal some of them have like 24 grams of sugar in a bowl 
So you want to opt for a health, take, make a healthier option. I find that, that cinnamon is amazing. It really cuts down on some of the cravings and um, you can sprinkle it on so many things. It's just great. It's such a nice taste. Um, what about it in capsules? We put it in capsules with yes. four here before we know we're going to go out and meet friends for dinner. I put the cinnamon and the coriander in a capsule and I take it. And that's to curb. What do they put on the table first? Bread. When bread. you go to a place for dinner, you get all kinds of nice smelling warm bread. Well, that nice warm bread has got some great sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So for me to avoid it, I use the cinnamon and I love it. It's satisfying. And I can just say to myself, I'm loving myself by not eating that bread. That's right. Or we just turn the, the basket away when it comes to our table, too. That makes it much easier. Now, what about getting saucy about sugar? You know, oh, there's yeah. a yeah, there's a lot of hidden sugars in sauces, in salad dressings, in like, but you know, you think you're eating healthy barbecue chicken. Well, that barbecue sauce has loaded with some sugar. And yes. you just really, you, there's a ton of sugar and even just like a little tablespoon of it. So start reading bottles and paying attention to what's hidden in those bottles. And I love and the next also, one. Right. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Sleep better. Sleep better by not eating sugar after what? noon because it increases your cravings and causes restless sleep. Once you give up sugar, after the first three days, you will be amazed at how well rested you feel. Mm-hmm. And this next one, you've always shared this with people, brush your teeth. And you even brush with on guard. With um, to help, yeah, with Melaleuca to help make those cravings go away. And you want to, you know, be careful of like those minty flavored um, toothpaste because that does um, make you crave something sweet. So, yeah. Just use the on guard. Um, be fine. Oh, it's great. I use it. I love it. Um, you might want to uh, infuse something in your water. We put, you and I love to put some oils in our water. I love peppermint water or lemon water. Um, but infuse your water, drink a lot of water. The more you drink, the less those cravings will be. Uh, and the last one is modify your recipes. There are so many ways that you can make your own recipes that you love for your family healthier. Just by leaving out the sugar and substituting other things. So. Yes, yeah, so I'll we'll give you more details and handouts tomorrow on the other um, webinar we're gonna do. Just briefly, for those who've been with us before, you know your plan ahead, don't have any temptations left in your house, send them all in to work with your husband, that's what I did. We took in all of our leftover Easter stuff last Friday and everybody at work went like, this is so cool, okay? Because <laughs> it's not here right now. Have lots right. of water ready with oils to put in your water and be open mm -hmm. to new patterns. Now, this is serious. I'm asking a question here. Do any of these situations trigger you that you want to go running to get something to eat? Someone rejecting you, somebody leaving you, or the threat that they will. Helplessness over painful situations somebody discounting or ignoring you or somebody you were hoping would actually listen to you but they can't stop talking somebody being unavailable to you what this means is like let's say you were raised by absent parents and you know there was an aftercare and there were timing situations and it was always about time and how much time there wasn't so if as an adult, you go to call your child who's away at college and they don't answer the phone the first time you call, you might find yourself reacting. You might say, oh my God, they're not available right when I need to talk to her. But it mm -hmm. was programmed from a long time ago. So when someone being unavailable to you occurs, when that happens or any of these things on this list occur, Rather than reach for the cookies, rather than talk about really want to go get some Ben and Jerry's, you mm -hmm. need to source 
where did this come from? Why am I, why am I so anxious about people being late for an appointment? How silly is that? Mm -hmm. um, do you react when someone's judgmental or critical of you rather than verified? Now, what did you mean by that comment? Like before we started today, I was telling Debbie about a lady who wrote to me and said, <laughs> do I always have to be so direct and clear? And it's like, um, okay, what, what did you listen to? You felt I was being very direct, but that's just who I am. You know, some people right. understand that and some people take offense and there's no offense intended. It is, could also remind you of a dominant parent or a teacher, somebody who was very direct with you that left you feeling mm -hmm. bad. Never my right. intent. Somebody right. being busy to make time for you, somebody not appearing to be happy to see you, somebody coming on to you in a needy way, somebody trying to control you, uh, somebody you know, trying to smother you, somebody like trying to talk over you all the time. Mm -hmm. Do any of these things trigger your discomfort or your wanting to go get something to eat, something to drink? Mm -hmm. Wow. Every time I judge someone else, I reveal an unhealed part of myself. Right. Oh, this that's is true. Well, this is no, this is a way, it's a concept. I, I, we, Debbie mm -hmm. and I try to introduce concepts to help you help yourself. And many times I've heard people like in the airport, we often play fashion police, just entertainer. <laughs> Other people do this. I'm not the only one. Okay. Yeah, people do it. Because <laughs> I, I don't understand flip flops in the airport. I do not. Okay, because some places you got to take your shoes off and you're walking on all these things and other people's leavings from their shoes. Okay, yuck. At least have socks on you can throw away. Okay, but every time <laughs> I judge somebody else, I reveal my unhealed part of myself. Okay, so that probably goes back to, you know, always being afraid of getting germs by walking in other people's houses. I mean, you're mm -hmm. programming is your programming but yeah. you have to decide if these judgments do they make you feel better or do they make you feel uncomfortable okay and deb you've told me when your one friend called you to give you bad news about somebody else's life you've really gotten to the point where you tell her no, wait 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 i don't want to hear that because yeah. it's something you recognize was not comfortable for you that's right. I I don't feel comfortable discussing other people's angst, pain, things like to me that's a very private thing and I don't want it relayed, you know, third party. And I have learned to just say, you know what, that's really not something that I think that we should discuss right now. And it's made me feel much better in those situations because I'm, I don't, I'm not judging anybody and I don't want to criticize anybody, but those things make me feel uncomfortable. So if other people are okay hearing it, that's fine. But me personally, it's an uncomfortable experience. And I've learned to now open up and just say, no, let's not, I don't want to discuss that. And it's just, it's healthier for me. And that's part of what Sue's saying right now. You have to figure out what your triggers are and what makes you maybe you want to go and reach for something to feel better afterwards. And that's what, that was one of those things. Right. If in response to any of those previous lists that we have, you get mm -hmm. angry or you get needy or you comply, if somebody's dominating you and you just plain comply, even though inside your intestines are twisting, you're not mm -hmm. comfortable with what you're being asked to do or to be responsible for or you become a people pleaser or <laughs> shut down and withdraw from other people. Mm -hmm. You could also blame somebody else for your pain and that may be very real, but I'm sorry, sweetheart, if it happened 30 years ago and you are now in control of you, you are now managing you and the other people do not have the power to inflict pain on you anymore. Mm -hmm. It's time to move past it. 
Right. Some people turn to addiction, sugar, food, drugs, alcohol, shopping, work, gaming, and so on. Avoiding isn't working out well for you. So if in avoiding you've adopted any of these strategies, you're not going to be satisfied. You aren't going to be satisfied being a people pleaser. You're not going to be satisfied being shut down and withdrawn because you're going to miss some of the good parts of life. If you withdraw mm -hmm. and you're not like because somebody insulted you and I'm just going to be mad the whole world. I'm just going to stay home. And I'm sorry. I think everybody's had a day like that or so. That's sure. called avoiding. Mm -hmm. So if you can relate to any of these responses, you need to write out how you feel about them. You'll probably realize the pain doesn't go away just because you try to avoid it. You may even end up in more pain. It will help you to learn to be very compassionate with yourself. This honesty about your triggers will eventually heal them. The honesty part I'm talking about is where you recognize your response to somebody else's behavior when you don't have to react at all. You don't have to participate. Let me run a couple more concepts by you, and then we're going to pull it all together. Okay. A big part of becoming an adult is unlearning a lot of the shit you were taught by people who didn't know what they were doing either. Right. Wow. Like in school, I need you to think about this, because think about high school. How many times mm -hmm. were teachers in positions of authority to make you feel bad about yourself, whether you didn't understand algebra, chemistry wasn't your thing, phys ed definitely right. wasn't my thing. I mean, you know, this body was <laughs> not for running ever, okay? So I could run from base to base for softball because then, you know, I had a motivation. We could win the game. Woo! Move right. it, move it, move it. Okay, other than that, no. And the gym teacher picked on me constantly because I didn't. Oh, whatever. I wasn't part of her group, I guess. I don't know. But they mm -hmm. can give you a real poor image of yourself in certain areas. And that's yes, what you can. need to understand. Right. I wish it was as easy to just erase it out of our brains, but it doesn't. It kind of stays in there for a while. Right. And when you're getting off sugar, sometimes these things float back up to the surface. Mm-hmm. You got to forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know until you lived through it. Try That's again. It. That is Yeah. Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know until you lived through it. Honor mm -hmm. your path. Trust your journey. Learn, grow, evolve, become. Don't stand there and keep beating on yourself saying, oh, I was so stupid. I should have known that she was a flake. Why did I ever take on anything she said? No. How does that help you? It doesn't. It, instead, you've got to acknowledge that they didn't know what the hell they were doing. And it's a shame they were ever put in that position. But the false you doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. The misinformation they gave you is canceled. Right. So true. Uh, you want to remember that you are not obligated to be someone's counselor and help them with all their problems if it's bad for your own mental health. You're not, You're obligated. not obligated. You're not obligated to be there for someone 24-7. A lot of people expect that too. You're not obligated to remain friends with someone who emotionally drains you. Maintain negative relationships because you've been close for so long because you're related or anything else. You're not, you're not obligated to yeah. do anything that makes you unhappy or put your health at risk. That's why it's important that you recognize the triggers. It's important that you recognize 
when you're having emotional discomfort, mm -hmm. okay, please, 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 because Debbie, you and I have discussed this so many times. We've met so many talented people literally all over the world sharing doTERRA. Yes. And we hear these kinds of concerns all the time. So many good people are drawn to doTERRA who are very sensitive, have wonderful talents. We do. We. Yeah. And, and we're always so surprised. We're surprised when we hear some of this from these people because it's so deep. Yeah, and they, and they think because they can solve problems, because they are solution oriented, that when someone mm -hmm. brings them a problem, they're supposed to take it on. Well, we're gonna go back to listening techniques because how you listen to your own self, your own self talk is really important. And we're going to remind you about the value of listening carefully to others, mm. especially if you're sensitive and intelligent. Right. Oh, stop thinking about everything so much. You're breaking your own heart. Yes. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, that broken record, right, that just goes around and around and around. You have the power. You either get bitter or you get better. It's that simple. You either take what has been dealt to you and allow it to make you a better person or you allow it to tear you down. The choice does not belong to fate. It belongs to you. And if you forget you have the power, make up spike nard with Siberian fur, black pepper, and a little fra fractionated coconut oil, rub it all over your hands, rub your hands together, inhale that puppy, and love yourself. Because if you want to be bitter, you will draw to you other bitter people, and you can have a great crowd of bitter, unhappy people that will feel familiar, but are all very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. If you choose to be better every day, if you choose to find something good every day to be grateful for, you will move from bitter to accepting you've always had the power to be better. Wow. Remember, you want to forgive yourself first. Release the need to replay a negative situation over and over again in the, your mind. Don't become a hostage to your past by always reviewing and reliving your mistakes. Don't remind yourself of what should have, could have, or would have been. Release it and let it go. Move on. Right on. That's so true. And when you're getting off sugar, funny things happen. <laughs> okay. Discussion is always better than argument because argument is to find out who is right. And discussion is to find out what is right. Hmm. And when you're getting off sugar, resist wound sharing. What do we always say about wound sharing? No, no, no don't do it. It's not a competition. We're not sharing stories. It's not like who can top this. No, it holds in the pain and it's not allowing you to move forward. Plus, Just let it. Right. When you're sharing that story of, oh, I suffered so much when that happened to me, A, you're not listening to whoever wants to talk, and mm -hmm. B, you're reliving the pain. Do you think your cells enjoy that? Uh, no. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> never, <laughs> never miss a good chance to shut up. I do like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. one, of the, one of my favorite periods of time was, when I didn't have to be the manager of the unit and I could just be a regular participant in the healthcare system. And people come up and say, blah, 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 blah. And I'd go like, gosh, I just don't know. You'll have to ask my manager. And it didn't matter that I trained her and it didn't matter that I knew the information. <laughs> I didn't have to say it. I didn't have to answer. It is so freeing when you get yourself to the point where you realize, I don't have to do that. It's so cool. That's great. 
Okay. Uh -oh. here's, here's a really hard one. Okay. You want to be compassionate when somebody is upset or somebody has a problem or it currently is going through something very challenging. You want to have compassion. You have to really listen to people. Sociologist Charles Gerber describes the tendency to insert oneself into a conversation as conversational narcissism. It's when somebody says, oh, my mother just died, the funeral home was terrible, and rather than listen to the story, you rush to insinuate your own personal story about when your mother died. That's called conversational narcissism. Hmm. It's the desire to take over a conversation, to do most of the talking, and to turn the focus of the exchange to yourself. It's often subtle and unconscious. Gerber writes that conversational narcissism is the key manifestation of the dominant attention-getting psychology in America. You need to listen without speaking, you need to listen without judging, and you need to render no advice or opinion unless somebody says, what do you think I should do? And that's mm -hmm. a trap. Morning, morning, that's a trap. Yeah. When they say, what do you think I should do? Your only response should be, well, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Let that, them that's... tell you because they need to express it out loud. And if you tell them what to do, if you make a decision for them, it's a no win in your relationship because if that decision works out well for them you will make them uncomfortable because they didn't make that decision themselves and another word will not have to be said and if you make a recommendation that doesn't work out well for them you get blamed right yes that's so true that true it's okay. very true when you are in earnest to be compassionate, please, please, please identify your intention for the conversation. Mary Ann calls and says, oh my God, my mother just died. I had the most horrible experience at the funeral home. You grab for you to keep you conversational, to listen without saying anything. You're going to grab Copaiba and any citrus oil and rub it in the back of your neck and declare from your heart that your intention is to help this person because the greatest gift you can give them is your time and your focus. But if you're just waiting for your turn to tell your story, they will leave this conversation frustrated because all they really wanted was somebody to help them mm -hmm. by listening carefully. The other thing that you can use, which is really good, is vetiver with console, because sometimes we are a mirror for what other people need to talk about. Mm -hmm think they're talking about something in your life, but they really trust you as a sounding board because the vibration is such that they recognize you have the wisdom to listen. So please apply the oils, set the intention that you may allow healing for this person by using your oils on you and your highest gift is to hold that person in a really positive place. Mm -hmm. Now, get out your pencil and some paper. We're going to tell you how this works. Okay. Why, look, here's some of those oils we just talked about. Yes, they are. When you recognize, see, recognize, recognize mm -hmm. that somebody triggered you emotionally and you want to run for the chocolate bar, you want to run for the bottle of wine, just to have a little, just take the edge off. I can't tell you the number of people I've heard tell me that, okay? Mm -hmm. Puts me to sleep, so I can't be very edgy then, can I? 
Practice processing feelings now. Get out your pencil and paper. Write out for your eyes only. It's so important that when you're processing feelings, however long ago it happened, you're processing the feelings, you write it out for your eyes only, and you throw it away. You shred it. You burn it. It's not for anyone else. No one else can even begin to understand what you're expressing because they weren't right. there that day. They didn't have your feelings that day. They didn't have your sensitivity mm -hmm. that day. And geranium is a great one for helping you remember where, what order to put pain in. Mm -hmm. Apply any of these oils, console, cheer, copaiba, any citrus oil, geranium, bergamot. Bergamot in particular is excellent for mind heart. Sandalwood mm -hmm. is great for mind heart. And write these things out. Practice writing. And if you only have 10 minutes on a Friday night after a long week, then just say, I can get on with my happiness because I'm responsible for me being happy by leaving work at work or by leaving my support group problems there. Don't bring these things home with you in your head because they're going to get in the way of your seeing beauty. They're going to get in the way of seeing the new things you can be grateful for. Right. And I can feel frustrated when I feel frustrated when I can't keep my own mouth shut and be a better listener. Whatever it is, this is how you examine how you want to change interacting with other people. A really right. big one is don't give me advice unless I ask you for it. Because A, you're judging something you're not really standing in the middle of. And B, I might just want to practice ideas out loud and you're safe. And from there, I'll be able to figure out what I want to do. Many teenagers suffer from parents trying to give them too much advice. Mm -hmm. What would you like to do? How would you like this outcome to happen? Mm -hmm. Make room for that. Right. Then fill the space. What are we filling that space? Because when you get rid of something, you get to fill the space with good things, loving things, happy things. Yes. Yeah. I love your first one. I love me by eating more vegetables. That's good. Yes. And drinking more water and taking my beautiful self out for a walk. Yes. And you and I can do that. We appreciate the beauty when we're out walking around. Mother oh Nature. My gosh, yes. Oh, yes. And spring is almost here. We got little teeny buds on a lot of our trees, and our daffodils are trying to come out through the snow. It's really nice. It is. And I, this one, this one's really nice, too. I love me for letting others be with themselves and resisting control urges that were previously my way. Yep. Yeah, when I say every Love day, recognize it. little things about yourself that you're happy with. I love being in charge of only me, my heart, and my mind. I don't have to be in charge of everybody who walks in my room. I don't have to be in charge of people who write silly emails. I get all kinds of funny emails, and a lot of them I just delete, 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 because it's like, oh, I hope you enjoyed writing that because... You got to express some thoughts, but doesn't apply to me, honey. Right. And we yeah. make affirmations. I am good enough. I am worthy. I am loved. Those mm -hmm. are phrases you need to say to yourself over and over again. It's really, really important. And right here, compassion and kindness. This is looking inside of you. Notice how the eyes are closed. And that when you open your eyes, that's the only judgment there should be is how can I be more kind and how can I have more compassion? Beautiful. <laughs> Wake up every morning and tell yourself, I can do this. Yay. We can do it. Yes, I can do this. And all of our listeners can do this too. Yes.
You can recognize when you have an, experienced an emotional trigger and you can recognize habits that you didn't even know you had relative to eating that may not be in your best interest. And one situation at a time, you can decide to handle it differently. Instead mm -hmm. of going for the crunchy munchies, get some celery. Have these things cut up ahead of time and just munch on that. Figure out rewards for yourself that are not on food related. Like we like to go paint ceramics. We yeah, like we to go and play music. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to decide what is a good reward system for you. Mm -hmm. And then while you're participating in the reward, give yourself a reward for just doing something simple. Don't make it something big. Right. It doesn't have to be long-term rewards. That's for sure. Yes. And I have emotions, on emotions. This is a really helpful book. I wrote this book and it, people are loving it. It is yes, out. They are. Available. You can get it from oilsharingtools.com. Mm -hmm. And we're doing webinars on the book. And when you buy the book, you find out websites and email addresses where you can get additional information on, on all the protocols and fun things inside the book. And we'd like Wonderful. to thank you for joining us. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. And A hard topic. Very well done. Thank you. Well, we all need reminders. We need reminders that we're all works of art in motion at this time. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to get better. Yes, it is. We thank you thank guys you. for joining us. And we thank Deb for putting up with the funny changes I made to the PowerPoint. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> That's okay. It was wonderful. It was great. Okay. Thank you guys. All right, Have a well, good week. We're on tomorrow at 1 p.m. And these are recorded and will be posted. Thank you very yes. much. Thank, thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Talk thank to you tomorrow. You, Bye. All right. Bye-bye.